to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> The Cape Cod girls, they have no combs. They comb their hair with codfish bones. Ah, 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 ah. Little mare, what's the matter with you? You've seen a man on a horse before. You calm down, girl. <laughs> They're only waiting to say hello to us. <laughs> Hold up there, Doc. Hello, stranger. You are Doc Adams, ain't you? I am. You're a long way from Dodge. Well, I'm headed for Cam Seaton's place. That's about 15 miles on south. Oh, you know him? Sure. I know him. A horse kicked him in the chest. Now, here he's pretty badly hurt. Some cowboy rode by, found him, and got him into bed, and then came to Dodge after me. I just came from Cam Seaton's, Doc. Oh, well, then how is he? There's nothing wrong with him. What's that? No, that cowboy was funning you. Cam never got kicked by no horse. I don't believe it. Nobody would play a joke like that. Well, it's true. You better turn around and go back to Dodge. Somebody might be needing you there. I'm telling you, Dodge. I don't know you, mister. Who are you? Just do what I say. Now get that buggy turned around. I'm driving on to Cam Seaton's. You won't drive nowhere if I shoot your horse, Doc. Put that gun away. You gonna do what I say? Of course I'm not. Then you're gonna be a foot, Doc. You shoot that horse? I'll shoot you. Oh, a shotgun, eh? Now, what are you doing with a shotgun, Doc? I'd like to eat prairie chicken, mister. But I've seen what two barrels of birdshot can do to a man. You, doctor, you're bluffing. There's a man with a caved-in chest waiting for me 15 miles from here. You kill my horse, he might be dead before I can get there. Oh, yes, mister, I'll shoot if I have to. You won't turn around and go back to Dodge? Nobody keeps me from being where I'm needed. The horse goes, Doc, and if you try anything, you go next. Don't you do it. Watch me. I told you not to. I told you. You still think Doc came here, Mr. Dillon? Well, there is footprints, Chester, headed straight for the house. Well, I just can't believe no part of it. His horse back there, dead and all bloody. Look on the porch there. Mm -hmm. He just came out of the house. Yeah, it's dark, all right. Hello, Matt. Chester. Hello, Doc. The Allen boy reported finding your horse and buggy back there, Doc. I'm glad to see you're all right. I'm all right, man. How's Cam Seaton? He was dead when I got here. Oh? I guess you saw the man I left in my buggy. 
Yeah. He was a stranger to me, man. You kill him, Doc? He killed my horse. And I shot him before he even turned his gun on me. His horse ran off. I see. So I guess it isn't exactly self-defense, is it? Well, that's not for me to decide, Doc. Am I under arrest? The day I have to arrest you is the day I quit. There'll be talk, Matt. People will say I ought to be waiting trial in jail. And they'll be blaming you for it. You sure you know what you're doing? Too bad that man's horse ran off, Doc. You might have got here in time if you hadn't had to walk. Can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos through the modern miracle of the L&M Miracle Tip. Through the pure white Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you all the flavor you want, the rich, exciting flavor you get only from L&M. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern, smoke L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Get L&M today. Bad worried, are you, Doc? Uh, worried? About what, Chester? Well, we, everybody's sort of been eyeing you ever since we got back. Oh, no, not everybody, Chester. Well, now you take that fellow across the street, standing there by the town soil. Yeah, yeah. Seems like he's always watching you from somewhere. I don't think I even know that man, Chester. He ain't been in town but a couple of days. Well, who is he? Well, I don't know. Well, he's got nothing to do with me. You're forever dreaming up something, Chester. I always said there's too much schoolgirl in you. Now, you listen here to me, Doc. I don't know what you're talking about, but I ain't sure I like it. Well, let me know when you make up your mind. I'm going to go back to you. Wait wait a minute. Eh, what, what? Here's Mr. Dillon. My, he looks real mad about something. Yes, he does. Let's go over to the Texas Trail, Doc. What for? I just told off a few of our leading citizens up the street, and now I want to be seen buying you a drink to really give them something to talk about. Now, wait a minute, Matt. I, I know what they've been saying about me not being in jail. But you can't fight them all. It isn't all of them. It's only a rotten few so far. Come on. I want everybody to know where I stand. No. No, Matt. Uh, can I come, too? I'd be proud to buy a second round myself. How about it, Doc? Well, well... I guess I can't turn down a drink with with a couple of friends. Thank you, Matt. Thank you too, Chester. Now I really had better get back to my office. Okay, Doc. Uh, hold on a minute. There's that fellow again, Doc. He followed us in here. What? At the end of the bar there, Mr. Dillon. He keeps watching Doc all the while. You know him, Doc? Well, uh, there is something familiar about him. What do you mean he's been watching Doc, Justin? I don't know, but every doggone time I'm with Doc, I see him. Matt? Yeah? I know who he looks like now. Who? The man I killed. What? Yes, his resemblance. A very definite resemblance. Well, who do you think it might be? Well, I'm not sure, but... I feel kind of funny inside, same as I did out there on the prairie. You two wait here. I'd like to know your name, stranger. You would? No offense. I'm Marshal Dillon. 
Now, what's your name? Nate. Nate what? Nate'll do, marshal or no marshal. Where are you from? Colorado. What are you doing in Dodge? You got something against me. Say it out, marshal. All right. Doc Adams killed a man last week. He thinks you look like you might be related to him. Your Doc Adams has got a bad conscience, maybe. I can't help who I look like. He could be wrong, but if he's right, I want you to remember something. Doc's a friend of mine. If anything happened to him, I'd take it real personal. You ain't talking about me, Marshal. It'd be a bad death, mister. I'd kill real hard. Chester. Yes, sir? Go get yourself a shotgun. What? You're going to stay with Doc day and night from now on. Sorry to bother you, uh, Kitty. Come in, come in. I was just getting ready to go to work. I wasn't expecting company. Uh, it's about this trouble Doc sent, Kitty. I, oh. I think you might be able to help. Well, I'd do anything for Doc, Matt. You know that. Oh, this will take your whole evening. Won't be easy. Go on. There's a stranger been hanging around town. Says his first name is Nate. Uh, he's medium height, wears a buckskin jacket and a brown slouch hat. Yeah, I've seen him. Well, Doc thinks he might be related to the man he killed. He thinks it might be his brother. You want me to find out? Now, that might take a lot of doing, Kitty. Maybe it's asking too much. You can't put him in jail, Matt. And it might save Doc's life. Now, I doubt if he's a man to get drunk by himself. Or easily. And even drunk, I don't know if you can make him talk. Leave that to me, Matt. Like I said, I'll do anything for Doc. Chester, come on, wake up. Oh, my. Oh, I must have fell asleep. I thought I told you to stay with Doc. Well, I was with him all last night and all today so far. Oh, where is he now? Well, I don't know. We were playing some cards here, and then I laid down for a minute. And, well, oh, dear, I just don't know how I could have felt. Go up to his like office, that. see if he's there, and stay with him. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir, I will. Oh, I just don't know how. Well, Miss Kitty. Oh, Chester. Well, it's nice to see you, but i got to go on with you. Oh, I'm going okay, to Well, Matt. Uh, sit down, Kitty. Yeah. You look tired. That was about the longest night I ever spent. Where's uh, Nate, whatever his name is? The last I saw of him, it was dawn, and he was almost asleep on one of the tables at the Long Branch. You're right, Matt. That man sure can drink. Well, Kitty, huh? did it do any good? Uh, some. His name's Nate Brandle. Brandle? Mm-hmm. His brother's name was Miles Brandle. Yeah. And it was his brother Doc killed. Well, that's why Nate's after Doc. I guess he just hasn't had a good chance to get him yet. But he's going to, man. No, he isn't. I'll run him out of town now that I really know who he is. Well, you want to hear the rest of it first? <sighs> yeah, go ahead, Kitty. Well, Nate's brother, this Miles Brandle, he heard Cam Seaton was living here, and he rode all the way from Colorado to kill him. And he found him lying there hurt and learned that he'd sent for Doc. Huh? I guess he figured if he could keep Doc away... Cam wouldn't need killing. And he was right. Why was he after Cam? Well, Nate didn't say much about that. But the important thing is that Miles was an outlaw with the price of $1,000 on his head. I never had a circler on him. It's true, anyway, according to Nate. That's why he's after Doc so bad. He thinks Doc shot his brother for the reward money. But hasn't he heard this story? I couldn't believe it, Matt. Dylan? Yeah, Chester. Doc left a note on his door that he's down at the stable looking over a new buggy horse. I'm going to hurry on down there. Wait a minute. I'm going with you, Chester. Kitty, huh? I uh, 
I think Doc will be wanting to thank you himself for what you've done. Just have an L&M. Enjoy a really modern cigarette. A cigarette that gives you all the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you the flavor you get through the modern miracle of the L&M Miracle Tip. Through the pure white Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive, live modern. Smoke L and M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Get L and M today. Just inside the door. Yeah. I don't see no buggy horse, though, nor nobody else. Well, at least Doc's still all right. Oh, I promise I won't never fall asleep again. I will take Doc back to the office where he'll be safe, and I'll go round up Nate Brandle. Now, where's he going? Hey, Doc! Somebody shot at him. Yeah, come on. I'm all right, man. Stay down, Doc. There he goes out that stall. Hold it! Got him. Doc! Did you kill him, Matt? I tried not to, Doc. You hit me twice. Here. Yeah. Let me have a look. No. You finished me like you finished my brother. Oh, don't be a fool. Hold still now. Letting him up to my office, Matt. One of those bullets has to come out before I can stop the bleeding. I just tried to kill you, Doc. I know. Then what are you doing trying to save me? I'm a doctor. Nothing can keep me from a man who needs me. I tried to explain that to your brother. I don't believe you. You're lying. Let's get him moved, Matt. We're wasting time. Did you get the mail, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, it finally came, Chester. Now, go upstairs and get Doc, will you? I'll be in the office. Yes, sir. Nate, you awake? I'm awake. Well, come on out. What for? You gonna hang me? Go on into the office. Two weeks in bed, three weeks in jail. You begin to wish you'd killed me, Marshal. I kept you in jail because Doc wanted you there, Nate. Has he always run the law around here? It was him you tried to kill, wasn't it? If I had my way, you'd be in prison. Between you and Doc, I ain't got a chance of nothing, have I? They're gonna get that settled right now. What do you mean? I don't know. I'm doing this Doc's way. I didn't ask you. I got him, Mr. Dillon. Good morning, Matt. Morning, Doc. Hello, Nate. Well, it came in today's mail, Doc. Give it to me, Matt. Here it is. Thank you. You got a pen in your desk, Matt? Yeah, help yourself. What is that? What are you talking about, anyway? The reward money. Thousand dollar check for killing your brother. Oh. Doc put in his claim, so I sent to Colorado for it. Yeah, I might have known. I hope you have a good time with it, Doc. What are you going to spend it on? Tell us. I'll tell you, Nate. I'm going to spend it on you. I've endorsed it. Here. 
It's all yours. Mine? Take it. But what for? You'll have to figure out what for. Well, it's about time you did, too. Marshal? Yeah, Nate. My brother left a wife in Denver. I'm going to see she gets this. She won't have to know what it's from. Can I leave now? Yeah, you can leave. But, Marshal, it... Don't worry about it, Nate. I'll tell Doc you finally got it figured out. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Friends, do you like the flavor of modern living, the fullness of it, the excitement of it? Then you'll like the full, exciting flavor of L&M, the modern cigarette. Through the modern miracle of the L&M miracle tip, you get all the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you the full, exciting flavor you get through the pure white miracle tip. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Mm-hmm. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Maybe you could spare a few hours of your time each week helping to keep your country safe from a possible sneak enemy air attack. Men, women, teenagers, too, are eligible to join the Ground Observer Corps and serve as plane spotters, filling in the unavoidable gaps in our radar network. It's easy but fascinating work. When you're in the Ground Observer Corps, you can wear your silver wings, proud in the knowledge that you're doing your part to keep America safe. Why not join tomorrow? Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke.